Greetings, my Gucci Gator Gangsters, it is the Good Sir Knight, and today we're going to talk about Varbox. Oh, Varbox is a virtual reality shooting game, predominantly developed in Hong Kong. We had some representatives out from Taiwan who were helping with the tournament, so we did a tournament back in uh, June 27th. And most importantly, before we get started, I want to thank Mr. Kunasan from Airsoft97 slash Spark, the primary airsoft retailer, repair, overall everything airsoft related store here in Okinawa. He's a cool dude, known him for years. I've helped translate for the store for a few sales and stuff on my own time. Good guy. He gives an invite because he actually knows Upi Upi Tai, which is the all girls airsoft survival team who's coming out to host the tournament. They're giving the whole um, intro to Okinawa. Hey, this is fun. We have it up in mainland. It's a good stuff. Sort of ordeal. Raising the hype in the synergy across organizations. But yeah, we got an invite from Mr. Kinazan, which was much appreciated, because we got to basically play hours of virtual reality shooting for free. And it was a good time, we all had fun. I want to also well, thank Upi Upi Tai for coming on out, and uh, being part of the tournament, and actually getting to meet them, finally, after knowing about them for years. Getting to meet them in person was pretty cool. The three members who made it out with uh, Boss Karida and all that good stuff, so... I want to thank the team, those who both made it out and didn't make it out, it was a lot of fun to get to shoot with you guys and uh, have a bunch of fun side conversations. Um, so the Okinawa team that made out, and also want to give thanks to Pink Elephant, which is the actual darts bar. This is all out in American Village, by the way, if you've ever been out there. Second floor above the Sega. Pink Elephant had their own little team. We had a good time. They have mostly they have root beer and they have a very interesting donation jar that I would highly recommend checking out. I'm not going to provide any spoilers, but the things they write on there every week is pretty funny. So, with all that in mind, I think I thanked everyone, that was everyone. Oh, two more people I need to thank before we get started. My buddy Mythic USA for his unique gear designs and constant support he's been being able to get to the channel and everything. And also telling me not to drink a ton of caffeine, which is advice I should have listened to, because he's done more professional shooting than I have at this point. Allegedly. Allegedly. And, uh, yeah, so he gives some support, some pointers during the thing, he said, hey, don't drink a lot of caffeine, and I'm halfway through a can of Monster, I was like, oh no. I mean, there's a delay due to Typhoon, so we had to wait even longer to get started, so I was getting sleepier, so I had to stay awake, and fun fact, a lot of caffeine plus performance anxiety makes your aim start to do this thing, so, yeah, it significantly negative impact on the score, that probably could have been mitigated with less caffeine use. So there's your key pointer right there if you're doing any tournaments lately. In addition, I need to thank um, one of my good friends, who we're going to call Cork Tree, who's been giving support to the channel, is a pretty good friend all in all, want to make sure she gets a proper reference in the video. So, with that, let's finally get into talking about Varbox. So the Varbox reality thing, it uses a Oculus Rift, little headset, it's connected up to this little machine, the machine's got a little main screen so people can kind of see what you're seeing, and there's also the back area computer that's like, oh yeah, this is the whole processing software and da 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 da, technical details. That connects up, this little headset, or it connects to the little top rail thing that moves around, and that connects to the set, and then that connects downwards to, it's basically a high point with a massive EOTech with a weird halo thing. It's pretty much a 3D printed gun. It doesn't feel like any of the guns I've used before, but 3D printed and um, that little sensor is to communicate with your headset for where the sight is. So, how Double Tap particularly works is we had four main games going on, two of which you're actually going to use for the tournament, which were also the two I didn't play nearly enough of. So yes, I'm a fool. I could have looked on the... they have an app by the way. You get a, like a free game every now and then with it, but you have the app and it's got the global ranking stuff. It actually tells you the two games that are ranked. Which would obviously make sense for the two games we're going to be doing. I probably could have just asked, but instead I was obsessed with the extreme zombie mode, so. First off, the two games that they do for score, and the ones we did for the tournament. The first one is um, basically just a zombie street, so you're in this wide open area. Now, the weapon you're using is technically a Glock 17, but for legal reasons it's been renamed. Top slide, silver... And I guess the gloves are part of the gun. So you get this little clacker inside of your gun, by the way, when you just dip that down real quick or you do the low reload, depending on how much speed you, or time you want to waste. I like the front clack one, but that basically clicks forward and it does a reload animation. 
Gun holds 12 rounds. However, when you fire the last round, the slide does not lock back. It waits until you line up that next shot you really need, and when you pull the trigger, the slide just rolls back and then locks in place. And it's like, oh, well, that is unfortunate, so got to time the reloads. Big deal. You only got 12 rounds, too, so missing is a kind of thing. So, yeah, make sure the um, lenses are clean, by the way, because any smudges are also going to throw off your aim exponentially. It does a pretty good job, so you got your two rear sights. I honestly don't think I've really got the color behind for, but basically your front sight post bright neon orange and since this is all digital it's technically glowing not really but it feels that way because of the way the lights beam it's difficult to explain but yeah, you kind of get the feel for it it's more akin to guitar hero over guitar but it's also not bad so there's really no kick back whatsoever and the trigger pull is very light but it's not bad so the reload animation is pretty good so the zombie street in this big open area, there's these little Google Map location indicators you point at, and that moves you from place to place. So, key pro tip number one, pro strats, is get closer to the targets. You're using a handgun to begin with, so. And you have iron sights, so we're doing this old school, so you gotta be pretty close. Once you get the hang of it, it's really click, uh, really quick, make sure you're close to the targets, and then go pop, 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 and you're good. You can get pretty quick at it. It doesn't take too much effort. It's a bit of practice and kind of an understanding of what you're doing, why the gun's shooting the way it does. And you want to keep the gun farther from your body, which sound obviously lean in and get the good proper grip, but if you keep it close back here, the sensor is going to struggle with the overall distance to the gun, and that's actually going to make the gun kind of jump back and forth on its own, I've noticed. So, key things to keep in mind, keep the gun far from your body if you want the gun to give you a true sight picture or line, sight alignment of what you're looking at. Otherwise, it's going to start freaking out with the system, so. Cool stuff. Zombie Street. I know I said this like three times, I'll actually get started. So you got a bunch of zombies. Every zombie is doing this sort of gesture. Well, the slower ones. There's fat ones that do this. Practically nothing at all. Then there's these skinny little green ones that are doing this. Now, if you get headshots, it's five points. If you get body shots, three points. One takes them out, regardless, so. Depends on how many points you want to get, makes you want to have the shot. However, time. Time appears to be even more important than the shot placement, so... Occasionally, just bla If you can make the headshot, great. If you can't, just single tap to the chest each of them, keep moving. Which isn't going to work in an actual zombie apocalypse, but you get the idea, so... Tap all the zombies, there's a few windows, you move down this little thing, this little area. There's a few t zombies that are like poking out just a little bit, but you're generally, if you come around the side, you can get access to an actual headshot, so there's a lot of strategizing and knowing where all the zombies are, because if you get to the end, this big red um, finish target pops up. You shoot that and it's the game. But if you get to the end and you missed one zombie who's in a window just hanging out somewhere, then that's not going to pop up, and you've still got the clock running down, and you got to rush back and try to find it, so you got to learn all that, and that's the first one. So I didn't practice that nearly enough is the problem. So I was basically slowly going for headshots until tournament time. I was like, oh, I gotta maximize speed and go for a lot of chest shots. It went okay. The first problem I had tournament-wise is I aimed on the first target. I was like, okay, there he is, let's go. And it said start, and I went pop, pop, pop. And all three rounds missed. And that's how I knew I was off to a bad start. So <laughs> you go through all those zombies, and it's a good time. It's pretty easy. I have, um, I think I actually got a video or two up previously. I didn't upload too many videos because... There's a lot of radio music coming in, and I don't want YouTube flagging my videos any more than they have to, so... Alright, second one, Hostage Rescue. So this one, you've got these gas mask wearing generic terrorists that don't have issues with gender diversity, because you got about an equal number of dudes and females. So that's pretty cool, good for them, I mean. And then there's also the hostages, shoot the hostage, you lose 10 points. And the same headshot, body shot applies 5 to 3 points. And they're all showing up in this big old maze thing. So the trick is, as opposed to the zombie one where you're working your way through a street of zombies, this one's on a second floor inside of like a jail cell sort of stuff. So you got two floors of prisons. And there's a stairwell coming up to you, and then going out forward that way. I think I have a video footage of this one too, but first two pops up, you headshot him, then they start moving up the back area, then they come up on the left. Then I think a few pop up. They move right a bit, and then they come down to your lower left, so you actually gotta look under this bar and be like, oh, hey, there's guys down there. There's a lot of times it's been like, 
where are they? So, things to keep in mind. If you can watch a lot of footage of people just playing these two levels and grasp as much of where these things are in advance, you're gonna have a better understanding of where you need to be aiming, where you need to be shooting, so you're not wasting all your coins playing the game, which means, don't get me wrong, putting a lot of money in the machine and having a good time is both fun for you and good for the uh, company, but the better prepared you are, the more fun you're overall gonna have, which is why I think this is important. So the targets move from down there, and they come up on this corner, move their way back over here, and they work a little this way, and then they come back down here, and eventually they start popping up. No, they pop up with two people in front of them, so you have a wider body area and a really tiny window for a headshot. And that's when you actually got a laser pointer on your gun and highlights where you're pointing with red, so. A bit more useful than just the iron sights, but you can pop those targets in. Yeah, obviously don't shoot the hostages, take out all the bad guys as fast as possible, hit the finisher. And those are your two main ranked ones now. I wasn't doing terrible, I was doing the higher 500s when I was doing the warm-ups, but then caffeine and the anxiety of the whole thing, it dropped down to like 520, still lost by like, what, 5, 10 points or so per round, so it was still pretty close. So I don't feel too bad, but the thing with tournaments is you're always going to be able to do better. Whether you're having a good run or a bad run, you as, as they say, you want your worst day to be better than their best day, so that's why you got to train a bunch. So yeah, I could have done that a bit more, and eventually, you know. Then the third one, third one I wasn't really too impressed with, it's a uh, little target course. We're basically are trying to keep within one magazine, hitting a bunch of targets that pop up, a few little moving targets that you want to hit close to the center, a few white ball targets you hit for points. It's not bad, it's not as exciting as the other two, and I thought that was going to be the one we are going to go through, because again, I had to double check, so. It's fun. You got the little targets, and you're going through a little shooting house. It's like, oh, check corners. You go, oh, there's a thing over there. Pop. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Nothing fancy, no crazy tricks. You shoot a bunch of targets on the move. It's not bad. It's fun. It's definitely more, uh, hey, don't miss a shot, or you're going to have to make a reload, and that's going to cost you time, when you could have just hit it from the first time, so. Pretty good. Um, in addition, the last one, the one I had the most fun with and played way too much, is the, uh, Pretty much endless. It's called Extreme Zombie, but pretty much you're on, again on the second floor, this large warehouse facility, and you have zombies popping up. Now, this time it's still the same zombies as earlier, but you got skinny zombies that take two shots to take out. You got the blue zombies that also have a similar amount of sway, they take three shots. You got your big fat zombies, they take like four shots to take out. Now the big ones you want to go for headshots because they're not going to do anything special and they're usually pretty close, so it's a free 20 points basically. The other zombies I'm just I'm generally going to recommend body shots on the most part. If you hit them in the head at any point, they start this really janky chop motion. So it's better to hit them once or twice in the body, depending on which one they are. And if you can, then make the headshot because that's going to break them into pieces. And if you make a headshot, they also do that halo confetti grunt birthday party explosion, which, it warms my heart, I'll be honest, it's fantastic, so. It's pretty rewarding, it's fun to see in 3D, almost distracting to see in 3D, so the more you do it, the more you'll get accustomed to it, the less it'll distract in the future. So the purpose here is to, basically within two minutes, take out as many zombies as you want, there's like 3,000 possible points, you're never gonna make it, unless you're just god accuracy and reload timing, so. That one's fun, because it takes three shots on the first four zombies that pop up. You're going to use every round in the magazine, assuming you don't miss before reloading. And you're going to work your way left, and then you're going to work your way... Let's see where it goes from left to down, then back. Then it goes... Or it goes all over the place. Then it comes up behind you, then they're on a rail, and... You get the idea, so you want to get through that as fast as possible, and there's going to be new zombies that pop up behind you, so it's taking time. If you don't know they're there, you're looking for them, so you're spending more money to figure out where they all are. Fantastic. Apparently the high score is like 1,200. I scored like 950-something near the end, so I was really pretty proud. I think there's someone else who's got, who broke like 1,000 only recently, so... I want to do that more. I want to get that high score. That's fun, so... That's the majority of our box. It's a fun thing to do. It's predominantly a darts bar they got four machines at, but buy a drink, get the little mask, play a bunch of games. It's a good time. Highly recommend it. So, again, I want to thank everyone for the invite. Let us get out there and play, hang out with Oopy Oopy Die a bit, and generally have a good time. Party, so. That's everything I got. If you have any questions, you can ask down below. Otherwise, 
bars there. It opens at like 3 p.m., which is a fantastic time for a bar to be open, and it closes at like 5 a.m., so... Good stuff. Highly recommend it. If you're looking for something to do, if it's rainy, and you don't just want to get really, really drunk, man, hey, you can get the little app on your phone, see how you score. I'm giving you some pro strats here, so, I mean, if I saw a bunch of American flags show up on that scoreboard, it's the 4th of July in the States right now. It's like the 5th in Japan. But you get the idea, so. That's a lot for you guys. Again, thanks for everyone. Thanks for watching the few videos I had out. And to those who did make it out, it was a fun time, so. I'll see you guys next time. Stay chill stay classy, and cheers.